Hi, and welcome back to Temple Baptist Church. I'm glad that you're with me today. Today is my, my second part of what changed with Easter. You know, Easter was just this past Sunday, and Easter changed everything, not just for those that would come to faith in Christ. It changed everything for the world because the gospel is offered to every man, woman, and child in the world. Easter changed everything because it changed what would happen later in time. Everything that's going to happen in the book of Revelation is going to happen because Easter occurred, because Jesus became the Lamb who was slain for your sins and for my sins and for the sins of all mankind. Today we're continuing to look in Mark chapter 15 as we see what changed with Easter and specifically today, we're just looking at verse 39. You know the story of Jesus being arrested in the garden, taken before the high priest, put on trial, Jesus being sentenced to death, Jesus being beaten before he was nailed to the cross. And now we see that Jesus is up on the cross. He's already um, cried out to the Lord uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the Bible tells us in verse 37 that Jesus cried out with a loud voice and then he breathed his last. And at that very moment, we see and what we looked at last time was that the veil was no longer needed. It was ripped from top to bottom. But here we see something else that happened in verse 39. In verse 39, it says, So when the centurion who stood opposite him, that is, opposite looking up at Jesus, saw that Jesus cried out like this and breathed his last, he, the centurion, said, Truly this man was the Son of God. Truly this man was the Son of God. In Luke, Luke records it that the centurion said, certainly this was a righteous man. What the centurion saw that day changed something within his heart and within his mind. The centurion was a Gentile. He was a Roman citizen. He was a commissioned soldier. He was hardened. He was insensitive to death. He was insensitive to the Jews, to women, to uh, what others were facing in their life. He was a person that was chosen for duty and a person who obeyed in carrying out their orders that they were given. And he carried out those orders without hesitation. But look at his profession. As he has been there in the presence of all that was going on, Jesus dies and the centurion says, truly this man was the son of God. Most likely, the centurion saw something that was unusual and different in Jesus. The centurion was there when Jesus told the, uh, the criminal next to him, today you will be with me in paradise. Je the centurion was there when he heard Jesus pray for those that had beat him and nailed him to the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The centurion could have been even there when the high priest asked Jesus at the beginning of his trial, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed? And the centurion could have heard the response of Jesus. Jesus saying, I am. And you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. The centurion witnessed something different in Jesus. He wasn't like the criminals, and he wasn't like the Roman soldiers, and he wasn't like the high priests. He was different because he was God in the flesh. And the centurion recognized not only that Jesus was a righteous man, but that Jesus truly was the Son of God. Have you seen Jesus? Has Jesus made a difference in your life? 
You know, there is a, a legend concerning this particular centurion that he went on to become part of the early church. And not only did he become part of the early church, but he went on to become a missionary. The Catholic Church has even gone so far as to erect a statue of this centurion there in Rome at the Vatican because of his profession of faith in Jesus Christ. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us anything else about the centurion other than things changed for him. And likewise, God wants things to change in your life just as radically as they changed for the centurion. I hope that you put your faith and trust in him. At Temple Baptist Church, we want to help you grow in Christ. Come and join us if you don't have a church home. We meet on Sundays at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 6 p.m., and on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. We pray that God would bless you, and I hope that you'll come back next Monday for session number three in What Changed with Easter. See you then. Have a great day.